Hey guys, Bud here with Dependable Lawn Care. And I told you I was going to be demoing a Skag V ride, and here it is. The John Deere is a 657A. It's the 7 Iron Pro Deck. This is a 2013 model with a 22 horse Kawasaki. Uh, commercial air filter. In fact, I believe they have the same air filter. Um, has the no flat front tires, which are pretty standard anymore on all the mowers, including the Skag. It weighs in at just over 900 pounds dry weight, so that's not including your fuel and your driver or your operator. So that's the specs on it on the 657A. Okay, and again, that's a 2013, and it has 920 hours, I believe, somewhere in that ballpark, just a little over 900 hours. The Skag is a 2018. It is the V-Ride 2 heavy-duty commercial mower, 52-inch Velocity Plus deck. It weighs in at 1,030 pounds dry weight, so it's they're about 100 pounds difference. Uh, no flat front tires. This machine has 36 hours on it. This is their demo machine, but it's it's about as close to brand new as you can get, uh, other than just the 36 hours that are on it. It has a uh, 23 and a half horse Kawasaki, so it does have one and a half horsepower bigger engine than the uh, John Deere that I'm going to be using it side by side with. That's just a quick rundown, like I said, just the specs. So let's look at the controls. Um, if you guys have looked at, at these mowers before, the Skags, um, you know, I like the way the controls are set up. Now I wanna show you the, the John Deere first so I can, I can show you what I'm comparing it to because this is the machine that I'm used to. So number one, um, looking at the uh, operator area, they're very similar as far as uh, your placement. You're standing right between the rear wheels, you know, right where the axle would be on these hydro machines. The platform on the V-Ride is spring-loaded, so obviously has a lot more suspension, and which would equate to a much better ride. It has a bigger cushion, um, so you know everything's about operator comfort. As far as height and length of the machines. I think they're just about the same. Um, trying to look here. So they're they're about nose and nose up front. And I'd say that my John Deere is probably just a few inches longer. So so pretty close, but uh, the, the V-Ride might be just a little bit more compact, which is great. Uh, the platform on my John Deere it has the anti-vibration, but there's very little suspension. I've modified that some, and you'll see that in a different video. But uh, at most, it has an inch of travel. So there's not a whole lot of suspension there for a rough terrain. Now on mine, your parking brake is right here. So it's parked right now. All the way down is in parking brake off, and then up is in park. And the one thing that I don't like about that, and not bashing, but it's just the way it is, um, you do have to kind of bend over sideways to grab hold of the parking brake to park it. Um, taking it out of park, you just slam it down. It's no big deal, but, but to park it, you do have to bend over sideways, and that's a little bit awkward. And then the uh, deck height adjustment is on the side, and that's it's pretty standard. You raise it up to the highest position, it locks in. You pull the pin, change the height, lower it back down. I will say that uh, it pretty much takes most of my strength and my weight to operate the deck. There's not, uh, there is some assistance. There's a spring on both sides of the deck that's supposed to help with that. And I'm going to adjust that some and see if maybe that does help. But but it is kind of hard to, to move up and down, and I'm, I'm no sissy, so... Uh, controls, so you have the the front and the back bar, the, the steady bars, and then you have your hydro controls here. Your throttle is over here on the side, which I like because it's not underneath the controls. And your choke is over here. Again, it's not underneath anything. 
your PTO, your ignition switch, and then your hour meter up here. Uh, <clears throat> I like where the controls are. That's uh, it's it's very easy to operate, and nothing really seems to be in the way. The uh, one thing that I will point out that this does not have that I really think it should is a fuel gauge. There is no fuel gauge on this machine. And granted, you can run it for a day or two straight without running out of fuel, but you know I kind of like to know where I'm at on fuel, especially if you're trying to keep track of fuel consumption. The other thing that I want to point out is the rear tire size. Now, I believe that makes a huge difference on how a machine handles, how it rides, and how it does on hills and terrain. Now this John Deere has, uh, the rear tires are 20 by 10 rear tires. Okay, so it's a 20 inch tall, 10 inch wide rear tire. The Skag on the other hand has a 24 by 9.5 rear tire. So there's a considerable, dis considerable difference, you know, 4 inches in height in difference in the rear tires. And I'm sure that that has a lot to do with, with why they do as good as they do on hills and uh, terrain, along with along with your platform that has you know the spring loaded the spring loaded travel. So you're obviously getting a lot of nice suspension out of that. And we'll get up here on the platform, check everything out. For one, you have a fuel gauge, just makes sense, you know. This does have the Tiger Eye advanced monitoring system. And the dealer was quick to point out to me that this is not a computer. It is just a monitoring system. He said if you disconnected that or if it quit for some reason, he said it's not going to stop your mower from working. You're still going to have all the functions. You just won't have your hour meter. And he said it, it just gives you a, f a few things that help you to kind of keep track of what's going on with your mower. Um, it tells you if it's overheating. It gives you your oil pressure. Uh, tells you if your parking brake is on or off, you know, if you get up on your machine and you're trying to start it and you're not getting anything, it'll light up if you have your parking brake off, okay? Um, now on both of these machines, as long as the PTO is off and the parking brake is set, you can get off of the operator platform. They both have the dead man switch in the, in the platform and you can get off, pick up trash, pick up sticks, uh, move something out of the way without the engine shutting off. And I think that's just about a must on any machine. Um, it's such a huge pain in the butt if the machine shuts off when you get off. So, parking brake is right here. That's off. That's on. I, I barely even have to bend over for that, and I really like that. Your controls are kind of underneath your, your front and rear bar. Well, mainly just your rear bar. But your choke, your throttle, PTO, ignition switch. Um, it's all right there, close together. Um, most of it is, is meant for right hand function. And then your deck raise and lower is right here. And check this out. That's how hard it is to move the deck. That, that is so much easier and simpler than what I have. For one, it's half the distance and probably less than half the effort. And let it back down. And it's the same height selection the same height selection that mine has it's just on the opposite side which you know kind of makes more sense a lot of guys are right-handed not everyone but a lot of guys are and so having that on the right side just makes sense let me show you the uh, tiger eye so you have your your parking brake neutral let me uh, take that parking brake off yeah check that out so it's telling you that your parking brake's not on okay parking brake back on your uh, your operator light step off and look at that so there you go your uh, your operator is no longer on the platform so just some cool little features and then of course that bottom light I believe that's your PTO so if your PTO yeah PTO is on so there you go that's kind of cool I do like that I like being able to keep track of my machine but I like the fact that it's not a computer and it's not going to shut my machine down if it decides that it doesn't want to work so uh, this this platform and this cushion are very comfortable. Um, I think that's going to be I think that's going to be nice using that today. It'll it'll definitely be a difference from my John Deere. 
and my uh, my son Gage is going to be operating the John Deere most of the day. Um, I'll probably I'll probably operate both machines when it comes to the uh, hill testing and stuff, just because I you know he's not as familiar with the stand on, and I would feel better doing that myself. But uh, but we're both going to be mowing today, and he's primarily going to be on the John Deere. So uh, other than that, there's not a major difference in the blades. I, I've got the standard blades on this. I don't have the uh, Gator blades or anything. They are sharp, you know, they're, they're nice fresh blades, but they're nothing fancy. They're just the regular high lift blades. And uh, this, I checked the blades on this when I picked it up. They look good. They're not perfectly crisp, but they're definitely not, definitely not dull. So there shouldn't be any issues with cut quality as far as the blades go. Um, I think the only real major difference between the two other than the rear tires and it's not really a major difference, but this is a 52 and this is a 54. So there's going to be some difference in the uh, width of the cut. Oh, and one other thing that I like about this Skag. Now, my John Deere does have the two rear deck wheels. The one on each, each back corner, the scalping wheels, anti-scalp wheels. On the Skag, it has anti-scalp wheels that run clear across the back and act sort of as a striping kit and I'll show you that from underneath on the back. I thought that was kind of a cool feature that they have integrated in. So you can see that. So you've got your rear tires which do their striping naturally and then you have those two big rollers in the back that are there as anti-scalping wheels but they also help to function as um, you know, striping wheels, striping rollers, if you will. So, I'm I'm kind of excited to see how it's going to stripe. Um, you know, my stand-on mower it does okay without having a striping kit or anything like that. I mean, it it does a, a decent job of laying down a nice stripe. But uh, but I imagine I'm going to see some better striping with this Skag V Ride. So anyway, uh, that's probably enough of me talking. Let's get out and mow. So, side-by-side -side comparison, what we did is we went past what we would normally cut, and we cut down here into some of this stuff that's really thick. And I'll, I'll give you guys a better look as far as striping and all of that here in just a second. 
and we're also going to test both mowers and this thick crap so uh, let me show you the striping okay now as far as cut quality and striping I think they both did really well so you can see the striping you can see the cut quality this is the skag side Okay, this was the side-by-side, side, the first strike, and then we switched sides. I'll show you the cut quality over here. Okay, so you see how thick this stuff is. They both did really good. Now, we're going to line them up. We're going to try them in this thick crap. Thick, heavy, nasty brush. Um, pretty equal. I'm going to do a second pass with each mower. on to a hill test.
this yard and this area of the yard in particular is really bad about plantain has a lot of plantain weed sticking up and I'll show you if you don't know what that is okay you see that little it kind of look like a cattail almost but that's buckhorn plantain and these little things stick up and you can have a yard where the grass hasn't hardly grown but those stupid things will stick up like eight to ten inches within a week and they're just they're they're disgusting but if you don't uh if you don't treat your yard for them they basically take over you know and you just have a mix of plantain and some grass so the thing about those plantain is typically this is what happens this is a perfect example it'll cut the top half of it off usually but it'll leave about a three or four inch stem sticking up above the grass cut height or it will leave the whole thing with the head sticking up and you almost always have to double cut um, I can come over here with brand new blades on a mower crisp fresh blades mow slow and I still have to double cut those stupid things so I just wanted to pan around and uh, I can see a few I cut this area with the skag and Gage is over there using it now I'll talk about that in a minute um, I can see a few, but there are fewer than normal, is, is what I can say. It is doing a better job. This is one, this is another one that, that just didn't cut off. And I think a lot of times what happens, these things are so wiry, when you run them over with the front tire, I think they're staying down just long enough that they don't come back up where the blade can catch them. And that's, that's a whole different that's a whole different discussion those things just suck um, but the skag did a good job of cutting them off I did not double cut this and even though there are a few of those sticking up there aren't enough of them that I need to double cut it so now I'm gonna Gage doesn't like being on camera he's real shy but uh, he is loving this skag and he doesn't really care for my John Deere stand on mower in fact, he's told me in the past that he just absolutely doesn't like it at all. He's not comfortable on it. He just doesn't feel like he has very good control on it. And uh, I think part of that is that he's not used to it. Uh, the more he gets used to it, you know, the more comfortable he is. But he started out this morning on the John Deere, and I put him on the Skag for part of a yard. And he said within the first few minutes, he was in love with it. He said he, there's nothing he doesn't like about it. He likes the way it rides. He likes the controls. Um, he said he feels secure on, on hills and slopes. It doesn't feel like it's going to slide or move. So to me that's a big deal I mean you know Gage is my he's my son but he's also you know he's also my, my most reliable help I mean he's never he's never not come to work you know so that being said you know him being happy with the equipment that he's using is a big deal to me and look at those stripes guys I mean that thing's really laying down some nice stripes and this there isn't a lot of grass in this. I mean, you know, look at this. It's a lot of dirt, a lot of weeds, um, very little actual turf. And that thing is really laying down some stripes. So, I guess I should probably go mow the front yard instead of standing here talking, but we're really enjoying demoing this mower. Um, so far, we're both really impressed with it. Okay guys, mowing in the rain is not something I would normally do, but I was kind of given this challenge by the Skag dealer. He told me if I get the opportunity, either mow in the rain or mow with the grass really, really wet so you can see how well the mower disperses clippings and how well it cuts even in wet conditions like it would be if you were mowing right after a heavy rain. Well, we had a good heavy rain for the last 15 minutes and it's slowed down to just a light rain now so 
it is freaking wet out, okay? Uh, let me pan around here and I'll show you. There's water standing on the asphalt. So, okay, we've been getting some rain. It's not just a, a light sprinkle. And I'm gonna hop on the skag and I'm just gonna mow a few strips. Um, the grass isn't super tall or super thick, but it should be enough to get a pretty good idea of what it does with the clippings. That is not something I would normally do. I, I do not like to mow when it's that wet. You know, morning dew is fine. Um, that doesn't bother me. You know, that's just about a daily occurrence, but uh, mowing right after a heavy rain or when the ground and the grass is just saturated like that, really not something that I like to do. But that mower had zero issue with chewing through the grass, spitting those clippings out. It didn't clump up. Uh, didn't make a huge mess, you know, it just mowed like it was no big deal. Um, so I can definitely appreciate that. one pass and this is saturated I and mean, you can see how wet the road is it's raining as we speak but uh look how thick this is guys I mean that's got to be well over a foot tall on average taller than that in places and I mean that thing just leveled it I mean there's a couple little things sticking up I could, I could go back over it and smooth it out but that looks pretty freaking good for for one pass on this wet nasty stuff so pretty cool okay so I just real quick 
hit it a second pass just to see what it looked like. Um, again, first time cut, there wasn't a whole lot sticking up. Second cut, that looks pretty darn good. I mean, you can't expect to cut off that much material and not have to chop it up a little bit, but uh, that looks pretty nice. I mean, that is some thick stuff. Well, guys, we got to have a lot of fun. Um, we got to try this mower out on various terrains. Um, got to got to try it out on some some bad stuff, some good stuff. The only thing I really didn't get to try it out on was a really nice, thick green yard, and that's just simply because it's it's the end of summer. Um, everything's been hot and dry, and there just isn't a lot of you know nice, thick green lawns right now to try it out on. But seeing how it handled everything else, I have no doubt that this mower would do phenomenal. Um, I want to say a big thank you to Skag and their representative for bringing us this mower to demo. Uh, also a big thank you to Lynch Equipment, which is my local Skag dealer here in West Plains, Missouri, for setting up the opportunity for us to demo this mower. And uh, at the end of the day, I can tell you that I am definitely sold on the quality and the performance of this Skag mower. And although I'm quite happy with my John Deere equipment, down the road I could definitely see myself purchasing one of these mowers. Um, when it comes time to, to upgrade from what I currently have, I think this mower would definitely definitely be an upgrade um, over what I currently have. Very high quality, um, performed very well, have absolutely nothing negative to say about it, and, uh, and I would definitely take one. So thank you for watching, guys. I know this is a longer video than what I normally post, but it, it required a little extra length to get in as much as we got in. So uh, again, thank you very much for watching, and thank you, Skag, for allowing us to demo this mower. We really appreciate it. Have a great day, guys. Thanks for watching.